Hey guys, welcome back to the So You Shoot Weddings podcast. Uh, here for, with another episode, we have Mackenzie Frank. Yeah, we do. <laughs> and I'm Chris Prince. So this week, we're going to talk about finding your ideal client as a photographer or videographer. And basically what that means is, you know, like, who do you, like, whose weddings do you want to shoot? Do you want to shoot barn weddings? Uh, you know, like maybe older couples. Do you want to shoot younger couples straight out of college? Like, do you want to shoot a bunch of Catholic ceremonies and churches? Boho who, who knows? Style. Yeah, yeah. We, you know, all yeah, over. So many different styles of weddings. And do you have to shoot just one style? No, you don't. But some people really do have. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, like they have it narrowed down, and that's what the they type do, they shoot, which is completely yeah. fine. But we're going to talk a lot about how to find your ideal client. So if you don't know who you want to shoot yet, that's fine. But if you do, we can probably help you. It's definitely easier narrowing down um, who you want. And I know that sounds bad, but like we're more attracted <laughs> to certain people, you know, and yeah. like their style. And a big part of that obviously goes with your branding and everything. My branding is very colorful. Uh, I feel like I'm a colorful person. Yeah, yeah. But like, let's go into who I like to attract and work with. I definitely gravitate towards the people who are, hey, we just want to have a good time and remember our wedding day and we don't need everything to be absolutely perfect i want the people who are like hey let's grab a drink and talk about the day let's meet each other and just be super comfortable with each other um i love laughy couples i don't need anyone to be too serious but i just want couples that are like i feel like michael scott but that are gonna like me and be my friend <laughs> it, it, that sounds weird but that's i just want to have a relationship with these people after their wedding. There's definitely value in that too as a business owner. It's like, oh, you should hire Mackenzie because she was great. She made us feel like we were like best friends. We still talk to her sometimes. <laughs> like that's great. And that's really good for your business, especially long term. Again, so, like, word of mouth back into that. When yeah. like when your couple's like, oh, like she actually cares about us and not just, oh, okay, shot this wedding. Okay, cool. Nice knowing you. Bye. Next couple. Yeah. Be, pers yeah. be personable for sure. So in terms of if you want to find your ideal client, so obviously a couple of years ago, you made a choice whether you did it consciously or mm -hmm. not to do your brand a certain way. It's just how you brand. Uh, what I guess what choice did you make or like what did you do? So with my branding, I didn't really know what I was doing at first, but I knew I needed a logo. I kind of made a couple small ones myself and wasn't in love with any of them. They didn't really speak speak what I wanted them to speak. So I talked to this one girl, Martha, and we went through it for maybe a month or so back and forth. I kind of showed her the ideas I wanted and like colors. And I definitely didn't want something that was like super duper girly and like not flowery or anything, but I wanted colors. And when I look at my logo, I don't know if, oh God, I'm so sorry going off on this, but there's this book called like the rainbow fish oh, yeah. or something. So my logo is an M, obviously, oh, yeah. from Mackenzie. I, I know you're talking about. And so it's kind of like scales, like colorful scales. Wait, doesn't he have one that's like super shiny or he's something? He's like a gorgeous fish, and then he starts like giving away his scales. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know if that's I metaphoric. Like it rings or... a bell. And honestly, I didn't do like the full brand update just because I didn't want to pay for it. And I feel like <laughs> <laughs> I just, I didn't need it. I didn't have the time or the energy. So I was just like, give me a cute logo that... Um, shows my personality and we'll call it a day. So yeah, I would say that your logo or your your brand definitely screams 27, 26, 27, 28 year old like <laughs> they they no, not not you, I'm yeah. talking about your clients like they definitely screams to me like a couple years out of college. Uh we, you know, recently engaged obviously, like yeah. we like to go to the brewery on Sundays. Yeah, like, we do. <laughs> like that's kind of I don't know, it's just kind of how it is and they do, I would say you do, like, you like people that like to hang out downtown, like. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. Like, I mean, yeah, not going out, but, like, like to adventure a little bit, explore yeah. um, doggos, you know, animals. <laughs> I just, yeah. Yeah, you like people that eat pizza and drink drink beer, like, at the brewery, like I said. Yes. I like to have fun, yeah. basically. So, and that's a. Low-key, yeah. chill people that want to have a good time. Yeah. Let's do it. And that goes back to, like, if you want to shoot those types of people, well, put that type of work on your website, you know, or on your Instagram. If you want to shoot a bunch of barn weddings, go shoot a barn wedding and advertise the crap out of that mm -hmm. barn wedding. Like, 
show what you want to shoot. So I was t- I was taking less and less like church weddings, like Catholic weddings. So like I don't think I have any of those on my website. So it, I mean, eventually yeah. they'll just kind of funnel themselves. Nothing against those weddings. I just not really my style as much. So like I don't show as many of those. Whereas I'll show weddings at like. You know, like a lot of higher end venues, like I like like the monastery and stuff like mm. that. So I'll show those places, and that's I would say that's not even like an ideal client, but it's it definitely puts me in a position to book weddings that like I'm gonna love shooting. People, sorry to interrupt. People all also like to see and know that you've shot at their venue. Um, we are good at like adapting and shooting anywhere. But just for them to know, like, okay, they know this spot, they know this location, they probably know the the vendors who work there already gives them a sense of relaxation. For sure. Like, that goes a long way when people are like, oh, have you shot at the monastery before? And I'm like, yeah, I have. And I'll go into, like, you know, some detail about it, what I like about it, all that stuff. That really goes a long way. And then, like I said, then I get more bookings there. Mm-hmm. And then maybe the coordinator, you know, knows me there now. And she and she gives me, yeah, and she gives me more leads. Like... It just kind of it snowballs into better work for you and more work for you, or at least more you know inquiries and better weddings that you are more like more than likely going to put on your website or, or even Instagram. So, like I said, if I shoot a bunch of like specific venues that I love, you know, like Hotel Covington, uh, like the Monastery, I'm trying to think of like more like uh, if I shoot those, then I'm going to get more of those, and then if I shoot less barn weddings. I'm going to get less inquiries for barn weddings. It's mm-hmm. just how it works. It'll work itself out naturally. So, Like Chris said, again, it doesn't just have to be one type of person or one type of venue or whatever. It can be a nice variety. Like I said, I'm more attracted to like the couple and their personality. Do I like shooting at a nice venue? Heck yeah. But honestly, my most memorable weddings have been based on the couple, not where we're at. Yeah, for sure. But, you know monastery that's a beautiful place to shoot their team is awesome so i guess i talked about more my ideal venue and you mentioned more your ideal client yeah at the end of the day yeah your clients are more important than the venue and some people like and some people like it'll work out where like oh i love shooting at you know the monastery or whatever or hotel covington or something but it works out great because the people that book those types of places are my ideal client. Yeah, you know what I mean? I would so it kind of works itself out to where like, oh, maybe that's why I love shooting there so much because all my clients, <laughs> my yeah, ideal clients <laughs> have their weddings there. Yeah. So it'll definitely do that. And if you want to, like I said, but it's nice to like go shoot a bunch of venues and kind of whatever you like. Figure out what you like, yeah. yeah. Maybe you'll get an amazing couple, but it's a venue that you're not a huge fan of. That's fine. Like, you put, you know, go ahead and advertise that. It's not a big deal. And it's not like it's, oh, if I put a barn wedding on my website, it's not like, oh, no, now I'm only getting barn yeah. weddings. It doesn't work like that. People will still reach out. Yeah, Again, yeah. they're looking more at your work than where you're shooting, but yeah. it does help for them to see themselves in the venues that you're shooting and whatnot. Once you find, like, a couple you like, odds are you're going to get their friends booking you. And their friends are usually kind of like the couple – um, kind of same personality attitude. So that way you're just like spreading farther and farther the people that you want and the vibes that you want. For sure. And it's nice to like, I get couples sometimes that are like, oh, like when my sister gets married, she's going to have, you know, I'm like, awesome. Like, that's great. Cause she was great. It, you can definitely get in that way to where like family members will book you. And like you mentioned friends. So if you have like a couple that you click with like crazy, you're probably going to click with their best friends too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they're going to see that and they're going to remember that. That's a huge thing. It's like, I, I said it in a different episode, like they're going to, re- couples going to remember how you make them feel mm-hmm. versus they're going to remember that more than versus what exactly you said. So uh, that goes a long way. Like the feeling they get. Also, how fun is it when you shoot a wedding and then the next year, like you're shooting like the the bridesmaids wedding in that and you're like oh my gosh hey and it's the like pretty much the same group and you get to see them again and hang out and it's just nice to have that sense of familiarity with them and build that relationship and like oh i remember like the mother of the bride she was so sweet she did this for me and now here she is again 
So basically, make sure your clients have a bunch of siblings. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's all you got to do. Single siblings nah. who are getting engaged and then boom, and then you're golden. Yeah, I wish it were like that easy. But that, no, like, and that's but that's how it is. Like, you get rewarded if you do a good job. Like, the venue will notice. I mean, hopefully, if they're, you know, doing things correctly, mm-hmm. they'll notice. Like, this, you know, this photographer or videographer, like, know what they're doing. That's great. And they want you to be their ideal. It works the other way for them. They want you to be their ideal exactly because they want to share your stuff and you use your work for their own purposes which is fine which because it helps us in return but you know if we all just like who we're working with we can just keep right keep going up (laughs) familiarity is a huge plus in the wedding industry trusting i love working with planners that i've worked with a bunch of times i love shooting venues that i've shot before i love you know working with photographers that i worked with before like all that's great it just is less stress for you it's less stress for the couple. So like if you want to find your ideal client on Instagram or like let's say, you know, to reach out to your Rheingeist couples or, you know, Madry. Your, right? Your, 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 your super fun couples. Like what do you do on Instagram, Mackenzie, to like reach them? So what's funny, I I show a lot of my a lot of my face on Instagram now. I used to be terrified of like the stories and I would just be like, hey guys, you know, like super awkward and redo them a whole bunch of times. But now I have so many people interact with those stories, I think, because they're like, okay, like, she's all right. I can talk to her. I know about her. I know she loves her kitties. I know she loves, like, psychopathy. I have people bring you're, me you're, beer. You're approachable. Yeah. There we go. They bring me beer to sessions like, this is your favorite, right? How cool nice. is that? Like, I'll, I'll, they'll, they'll just surprise me. And that's what's cool is, like, that's who I'm attracting. They like their beer too. It doesn't have to be alcohol. I swear, you guys. I just. I, it's not all about um, beer, but yeah. But it's like that gift that they're even thinking of me in that way. That means they already know me, and then I get to know a little bit more about them. And it's just, I just appreciate it. But yeah, um, the type of people who would think we should bring her a couple of beers to the thing. Those types of people are your idea. That's client. who I want. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that type of thought process. Yeah. Those kind of people. The thoughtful, but like also fun. It's just cool that they pay enough attention um, to what I say. That's mm. huge to me. Like they actually kind of care about it, me as a person. You know, I'm not just a client or like a, a vendor to them. I'm not just like, oh, you're just doing photo. Like yeah. we already built a cool ass relationship off of that. Even though it's just beer, it's kind of symbolic in a way of like, I'm giving this to you for the gift of photo that you're giving me. Yeah. And you posting on Instagram. So like you're getting a lot of – you probably get – do you get very many like DMs on Instagram about bookings or or even just people that contact you on your website and they say, how did you hear about me? And they put yeah, Instagram. Yeah, Instagram. Yeah. yeah it's so a, lot a lot of Instagram. leads from Instagram basically. So which tells me like your clientele is probably close to your age. Mm-hmm, you know what I'm saying? Definitely. You're not booking 45-year-olds uh, who are hanging out on it's Instagram. It's rare. Yeah. But yeah, I – yeah. You're booking I would say majority – like I like I said My before, kind of like just got out of college a couple of years ago, right? Yeah. I mean, ha- been in their job for a couple of years uh, after college, like that client. So, in terms of finding those, like you mentioned about Instagram, showing your face a lot, and maybe if you're out there and you're like, I don't want to show my face on Instagram, that's fine. Like that's just one way of doing yeah. like what she does. But that's like, just the way that works for me. Yeah. I think it's easy and just people again want to be like, okay, I can trust her. She looks like a nice person. I don't know if we talked about this earlier, but a lot of people just don't like show or talk about themselves. I don't know if they're a dude or a girl or like what their name is. (laughs) So if you have your business name, put your real name under it. Put it on your website. Tell them where your like city is, where you're located. That's huge because a lot of times, you know, you could have a dope website and you love their work. And I'm like, okay, are they located in like Colorado or freaking wherever like have some information right off the bat that yep. people can like be like all right cool check 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 that's what you mentioned too show your show a picture of you on your website yeah. or even you know instagram in instagram uh a videographer told me I was a couple years ago i feel like he was like your business instagram like it's great show you know show a bunch of weddings you shooting weddings but don't be afraid to show yourself too like clients want to know who they're booking yeah clients want to see your face uh, don't be like an enigma. Definitely show who you are. It doesn't have to be, you know, every post yeah. doesn't have to be of you. But like, even if it's your story, that's a great thing. Instagram stories. Cause you don't have to post anything. It's gone. Tomorrow. Yeah. It's gone. So you yeah. may as well post, you know, 
post yourself. It's kind out. of like unlimited. I think you can post up to like a hundred <laughs> posts and I've done stories. it like yeah. with pictures. But yeah. And I know like for us, we don't love being in this, in front of the camera as much. Like that's why we choose to be behind and it's like scary and weird and we don't like that as much but it is important for them to know who they're booking because like it's a big deal it's thousands of dollars they want to know you and be comfortable with you day of and beyond definitely and if you think like who like would i hire me if you think about that about yourself yeah that's a huge thing like be honest with yourself like look at your website you know look at like oh is my website super light and airy well then you're probably going to get couples that like light and airy Mm -hmm. photography or videography Whatever you, whatever your style is, you know, show a lot of that Con- because keep it consistent. Yeah, that's yeah. a huge thing. Consistency, especially if it. Sorry. Oh no, go ahead. Uh, especially if you're in the game for a while. Like I get starting off, I was like, I don't know what my style is. Like I have a little bit of everything, but now I would describe my style as not light and airy, not dark and moody, but like the child of those two. Mm-hmm. So I would, I take reality and I enhance it a bit. Nothing over the top, nothing too fakey. But where it just it looks better than it did. And it's funny, though, because a lot of my couples say, like, that's why I was drawn to you is because of your style and how you edit. It's not on either end of the spectrum. Yeah. It's like in the middle. Yeah. Or... Which I love like all types, but definitely the middle. That's what I would prefer. When I see your work, I see like Uh-oh. edgy, badass. Oh, okay. No, like okay. this is like all cool <laughs> stuff, um, like energetic, you know. I just love the way you speed things up, slow them down. So I think city life, like industrial, urban, like that's more you than just the like farm. Hay I try to make the wet or the videos almost like roller coaster like because wedding days are like they're cinematic. They're, they're yeah. And they're yeah. All emotions are all over the place on a wedding day. So true that. Yeah. But that's we'll talk about that in another episode about editing and all that stuff. But yeah, in terms of booking your ideal client, I guess a quick recap before we end the episode is like show what you want to shoot that's a huge one if you want to do like if you finally book that awesome venue that you've been waiting for make it count feature that one on your website or you know post five different times about that one talk about it say why you like tag shooting everyone there about yeah, it. Tag. yeah like really go to town on that and hopefully you can do more of those and then after that i would say to try to find your client in terms of once you get that client don't let go of them and, and what i mean by that is like <laughs> Not physically. I mean, like, don't, <laughs> don't go, blame like, me. Like, definitely kind of latch on to, like, you know, why did that client book me? Oh, it's because of this. You know, maybe I took them out for a couple beers at the brewery. Like, cool. Maybe that's your go to from now on at, when you book people. Like, hey, do you guys want to go grab a couple beers? Cool. Like, uh, whatever you want to do as a business owner, like, just go the extra mile, do that, and then, yeah, you'll be rewarded. Yeah. I would say, real quick, I think couples at least for me, if you have the time, I'd say meet with your couple. I'm bad on the phone. Chris is good on the (laughs) phone. Um, I love to just sit down with them and like have an open discussion, no pressure, because I've had a lot of couples say they're nervous for the consult and like in person. Yeah, in person. And to me, that's funny because they're usually coming with their significant other Mm -hmm. and it's just me. So like I've done a ton of these, but I still get nervous too. So just once you sit down, grab a drink, have something to kind of fiddle with, honestly, it just makes it like all the stress melt away. And then you can just have an open conversation about their wedding, what they're looking for, and know that, hey, we're actually going to work together really well. We met. I know you. I know your face now. It's going to be a smooth day. So I think that about does it for this episode. And thank you guys for listening. And we will see you next week. Next week. See you later. Later.